Breaking news, everyone. Look at who we have here. The crew is the band is back together yeah. again. Yeah, the crew is back together. It's uh, 70th year anniversary, and we thought, let's get the gang back together. The, the gang that dominated the 90s. We spent a lot of time together here, about 10 years together. It was, was fantastic. I was in grade school in the 90s. I, yeah, I, well, I was here when the station opened in 53. So yeah, it's like, <laughs> Put the rivets in the tower. <laughs> yeah. Now, you, you guys saw a lot of change. Like It went from no midday, then you had a midday. I mean, maybe you could talk about how the, the, the news changed while you guys were here and how the station grew and the stories you guys could write. You could write a book. I, I think what made you guys such a successful team is that you were very close. When I first started here in the late 90s, I was intimidated by all you guys because I, you know, you were real close and you were these veterans and I was just like this rookie starting in. But uh, can you maybe t well, talk about that? I was intimidated by these two. Actually, probably all three, but especially <laughs> these two because again, I was the last one to join this August group yeah. on the floor here. <laughs> and I always like to say that I didn't have any formal broadcasting training and it showed every day. <laughs> I was just a meteorologist who wanted to forecast weather and television and managed to do that. But I spoke when I was supposed to talk and otherwise I was quiet. Because, you, know. you were very, yeah, you were very quiet, but when you opened your mouth, you were so funny. Well, That's yeah, so funny. People, people, I tried not to give people a reason out there to brought the viewers to not watch me. So yeah. I tried to keep yeah. that humor in house <laughs> because, you know, I was just here for weather. Yeah. Well, I was here probably first. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I anchored with Red Donnelly at yep. the time. And when I came, w we literally had two manual typewriters, not just electric typewriters. Like, we had manual typewriters and two electric typewriters. So we started with typewriters. We ended with computers. But, I mean, that's how long it was for me, how long ago. And there was a couple days that the manual typewriter actually broke. <laughs> and we just, there was a line behind the typewriter just to get the newscast on the air. I just remember yeah. that. So. Yeah. And weather, of course, graphics. I started using Today Show's video. They would actually put it on two different tapes. And I had a button that I could push that would they make them change from one tape to the other tape. So I'd have to watch that and see, you know, does that match my forecast? Because I was a big stickler about, you can't show a graphic that doesn't match the forecast. So some mm -hmm. days it's like, what am I going to do? But then computers came in and they were very rudimentary at first. And then they got to be so complex that, you know, Jeff, he's off camera here. He was our graphics guy. And I was just like, okay, Jeff would make graphics. and He still I makes graphics he, for everybody. I know, I know. I was, I was graphically challenged. We'll put it well, way, but when, I, when I did it, I had magnets that we put on the wall. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Throw it up there so you yeah. can stick. At least I didn't have yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now the thing is, you, Jeff mentioned we went from we had News Nine Live at Five started in the nineties. Yeah. Uh, the Midday program midday. started in the nineties, mm -hmm. and I remember they let me co-anchor the Midday with Lisa Kick, and they said Bill will just do all the fluff stuff. He'll just do all the fluff <laughs> stuff. And then finally one day they went, Well, Cher Fred's coming up here. We have no one to interview him, and it's about a, a drug bust. Yeah, Bill could do it. He's a sports guy. He could do it. There's always some sort of drug issue in sports. He can handle that. And I thought, okay, this is my big uh, step into news. And then they kept me out of that for the next, I don't know, 20 some years until they let me come here in the morning. <laughs> Kevin, I gained the utmost respect for you when one person could halt Jamboree in the Hills. <laughs> yeah. You did. Oh, I think yeah, it was two I, years I, I do. I, I remember, yeah, being back there. I think Leonard Skinner, like, told me I had to leave the backstage area because they're trying to figure out what was going to happen next. And I remember when, when, when they, that show went on that night, because they got canceled for a while. When it went on again, I was hanging out on the stage, just waiting for lightning to hit somebody. And somebody came in, and I don't know who it was, like, we know why you're out here, but we, they, they don't want you out here. They want you to just like quit being like, you know, like the Grim Reaper on the yeah. stage waiting and something bad's going to happen. Um, yeah, but other than that, I mean, that was a great gig for me. Otherwise, I'd go down there and like, I didn't even have to do weather after a while because uh, it's yeah. like there's no equipment down there. I, d I did. We talked about that. Yeah. Remember, it was like the power of that man right now. <laughs> that, was, that was really cool. Shay, what was, what was that like when Jamboree and the Hills started? Because you were front and center on that. You, you knew all the entertainers. I remember you introduced me to Barbara Mandrell backstage at Jamboree and the Hills one time. She gave me a kiss. I still haven't washed oh, that spot on my cheek. Wow. But it was, it was one of those events where Jim had gotten ill the first year was here and, and you brought me out on stage to welcome everybody and you said, no, don't get nervous. And I thought, <laughs> nervous? It's, it's just going out to say hello to everyone. And then I looked at how big that crowd was mm -hmm. and all of a sudden my knees were knocking a little bit and 
He said, you'll be okay. And you got yeah. me through it. But what yeah. was that like when that, when we, we started doing that? It was wonderful. It was wonderful. Jamboree um, in the Hills used to be in one location and then they moved it to another location and we just started going live then. And I was talking to um, our news director, Brian Trowing, and I, I was saying, you know, there's this, if you want to go live, like there's this festival and it would be so much fun. And the next thing I know, you know, they called Jamboree and, and we were starting to do, we, we did the first year, I think Lionel Cartwright, right. who was from Glendale, West Virginia, mm -hmm. right. he opened it up in the new location and that's where it all started. And, um, and then they started sending us down couple months ahead of Jamboree yeah. once they got the schedule and we would go make trips to Nashville and interview a lot of the, the stars that were coming and a lot of them were up and coming and really that was I think the resurgence of country music of where it is today started mm. back then too so we were at the very forefront of all of that and it just breaks my heart that that's no longer right. no longer a part of our and that's, history that here seemed in, to in be the the, one of the things that really started us on the upward trajectory in terms of, I mean, there was a lot of foundation oh, yeah. laid, but in terms of live events and going to different uh, yeah. right. Every county, county fairs, fairs and doing the news there. And, and, and the WTOVU9 All-Stars. The which, charity basketball. Yeah, which we probably could never have done in this day and age because there's too many news. Yeah, there's too many shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Back then, it's yeah. like, hey, we got a little time we can throw basketball. Yeah. I, I remember our general manager, Tim McQuid, just said to me, he goes, all right, Bill, here's the deal. Everybody's got to get back in time to do the news. And we were like, okay. And I remember we went, uh, I think we played about 43 games in 50 nights or some crazy was, number of yeah, games. Yeah. But everybody raised money. We didn't take any money back. We just said, make sure whoever's taking care of your facility, take care of them. And it was, it was great. And people, people loved yeah. it. They'd come out and watch us play basketball, which... Uh, <laughs> Who knows why, some, but yeah. Yeah, you saw some, <laughs> I don't know if you saw some really good basketball, but... Yeah. It did, Jim did have an injury though. He got he scratched cornea, I think, in one yeah. of the games. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of Yeah, pain. I had to stay pain. back and produce the news. I have a news. finger that's never been straight. So wait, no, wait. Thing. Jim never, didn't produce the news. Mm. You always I produce the news. I produced the news. She's <laughs> exaggerating. <laughs> Let me just say. Jim that. was the king of avoiding work at all costs. I was not. <laughs> Any future employers. No, Jim was the king of reading scripts without reading That's scripts true. for the first time oh, yeah. on the air. Can I get back to my end eye? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Which it was a lot of pain. Oh, nobody, absolutely. Nobody really cared about that. But um, the treat of playing basketball was when Bill would finally wash the jerseys. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. that became ripe. But that was a lot of fun. Remember, we played the Steelers and everybody. Yeah. Oh, that, that was oh, one yeah. of the, you know, No, the I Steelers. don't remember any of this. That's right. You, uh, <laughs> you, you're back producing. She wants to news. talk about producing. Now I, do, now, I do remember one thing that uh, you guys kept me from doing when we, we started the sports challenge. And the first one was throwing man out of an airplane with a, with a parachute. And then we went through all kinds of different things over the years. And you, I always said, you know, I keep getting these bungee jump challenges. You, you should, I, should I do this bungee jump? And... You put your foot down right away. You said you will not do a bungee jump, and then Jim, yeah, yeah, what she said, and then uh, it was, and then you you guys would find a story from somewhere on the planet that someone either Died got hurt or, or just managed that, yeah. to not well, you know maim themselves. Huge. Oh yeah, and you said, and then I'd watch it. Okay, I'm not doing the actually. Jump. I was encouraging you to do it. <laughs> Remember when we would turkey bowl uh -huh. at Kroger? Yeah. <laughs> There's no liability there. Though. No, I, I never got to do that. Uh, yeah, it was, that was frozen, fun. Frozen yeah, yeah. turkey. Yeah. And, Jim, and I remember we spun, we spun Jim around one time, and he wasn't aimed quite down the uh, frozen food aisle, and he threw the turkey off of the, the uh, I guess it's plexiglass or whatever. It didn't break. It, it was <laughs> the cooler? The cooler, and it just reverberated, yeah. and we just went, okay, let's shut this down. I remember please. one shopper walked by, and she said, what are they doing? I said, they're turkey bowling. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> like she's supposed to know. <laughs> <laughs> and then those turkeys went on sale the next week, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the scratch and dent. <laughs> what, what, what is it that made this place special to the three of you? What, what was it that, you know, was there and you just think back and you go, yeah, this was, this was pretty, a pretty good place to be and, and great people to work with. Or maybe there wasn't. Uh, they, that they hired me? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, a little older and again, as I said, no real training. Just wanted to get the forecast right every day, and uh, they stuck with me. Yeah. Well, I mean, but you know what? I mean, you you made it your own. I mean, you were 
you know, Kevin Nash is where the weather goes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They had a theme song for that. Was, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that, that was. I remember the day that there was, um, it's not a twister, it's a little dust Point. devil or whatever. Or what, what do you call it? Little dur funnel dur clock. And I remember you were at the back oh, door Bill, Bill, and Bill. you started chasing it across that the parking lot. no dust devil. It may have at that time. That was an F2 tornado in Harrison County. <laughs> and if you guys remember, uh, I don't know who all was there that day. You guys uh, oh, I remember that, okay. yeah, because yeah. we were running around the building. Yeah, well, the, the tower used to, you know, the tower still there, but mm. the, it was the old tower. And yeah. Len Smith, I think was his name, the engineer, mm. Len, right. yeah. had a window out that way, and he saw the tornado coming, and he was concerned that the tornado may knock the tower down on top of this building. So the plan was... Did they tell you guys? <laughs> yes, no, they <laughs> wanted us, the evac, the, our tornado safety plan was to go outside. And I was like, well, I got to do this update. And Tim McCoy, you know, has been here forever. He's like, no, you got to get out of the building. I said, well, which way, which side of the building is the train going to go on? The back, so we went to go out the front. I said, I'm going out the back. I want to see this thing. <laughs> I just camera, remember you a, running across. And a camera guy came out. And I like to pride myself. I never said anything bad on television. But I said a bad word that day. when <laughs> I, I said, where is it? Where is it? And all of a sudden, it was just, like you said, it was pretty much yeah. just a whirlwind by then. It was a loft. But there it was. And I said, yeah. holy and yeah. wow. that got bleeped, and then they showed that foot footage later on. And then the thing, I chased it across the parking lot. As yep. it went Do you remember, though, that was picked up by uh, a national news? It wasn't NBC, but I remember it was, I think, by CNN. Oh, I don't know. I oh, yeah, know it that. Got, yeah, the video yeah. got picked up. Ah. Yeah. What, what year did you get here? I got here in 91. Uh, oh, okay. When so did you it start? Was, it was after uh, 84, right that after I graduated 89. college. I was, you weren't here for the Shady Side floods then? No, no. I heard all about okay. that. I remember, right. I remember being in Connecticut working as a producer and then, or, or an intern, then a, then a producer. And I remember seeing the Shady Side floods every day. And I just, my heart broke. I had no idea where the Ohio Valley was other than looking at it on a map. And then I remember the, the, our meteorologist, Brad Field at the time at, at BIT in Hartford said, well, all of our weather comes from the Ohio Valley. And I, li I literally said, man, wow, I don't know if I'd want to live there. It seems like they just have <laughs> tragic weather all the time. Fast forward. How many years you've been here now? Ooh, uh, I'm going on, I think it's 18 or 19 here at the station. That was 15 up in Pittsburgh. So since 91. Wow. So long time. Not as, not as long as Jim. Well, Jim's not here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to take a shot at his age. <laughs> Huh? No, but I mean, the Shady Side flood, as you know, that, that it, it was one decision by news director Brian Troring, who said, after the 11, we're going to stay. Mm -hmm. He just had a feeling. Mm -hmm. And then I remember. I was called. I was on a prison break up in Tuscarawas County, and the weather was really, really bad. So I was yeah. wondering if that was the same day, because I can't. A lot of things yeah. meld yeah. together, yeah. right? I, but I, I, yeah, I was wondering before, if that was the same <laughs> night. Before I was here, I was up in northern Maine. Okay. I guess. What year was that, Shady Side? We should know. 90. That. 90, okay. 90, yeah. It was the year before. Yeah, yeah, that's 90. Right. I just remember seeing that video, and it was just yeah. amazing. Well, it, it led NBC Nightly News, and, and I remember the when Tom Brokaw said there were still 100 missing, and I just, that was sur a surreal moment, mm -hmm. you know, hearing that about where I lived, so. I was just going to add, because you guys were so, I felt like you were always so close. Like, yes. you had this friendship, and I think that came across on the air, and I, I think that's what really made your team successful. There are some other folks, maybe you want to elaborate on some of the, uh, I remember your partner in crime, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I mean, it, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> it is true. I mean, because we, we hung out together outside of work as well. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, it, that, that came across because we're like brother and sister. I mean, she mm -hmm. called me on my things she, that I would she say called you on everything everything so it was it, uh, it's uh, you know just think about how long has it been now that we've been friends I mean that's rare today you know, 30 years all of it yeah 30? I mean it's yeah, been 30? you know now we that's the, that's the interesting thing we might not see each other 
for a long time, but as soon as we see each other, we, we're right Pick back right, on the yeah, same yeah. page. Yeah. The right jokes are the like, same. This is, this is weird right now. This is like, it, is. it never stops. I know. It's, well, yeah, it's weird. It's like, it's like we're at home. The conversation doesn't yeah. feel weird. The yeah. being in the studio feels weird. Yeah. Yeah. I think honestly, like something like Jamboree in the Hills allowed our personalities to mm -hmm. come out and we had so much time to fill yeah. that we did become a little more silly. And then I think it started to bleed through a little bit into and we had each other's backs i thought we always <laughs> had a, had each other's backs where if something wasn't going right we, you, you stepped up for each other if something oh personally yeah we wasn't did good, but we always but did that but we had fun the whole time i would time. throw him under the bus oh absolutely <laughs> absolutely you, you on the right? air yeah. <laughs> i remember i want to can i tell you one of my favorite gym stories because sure. they're i think that's what it is everybody has a favorite gym story we were doing the Wheeling Christmas Parade, and of course, he was the king of never reading his scripts ahead of time. And so, Did you prepare we're for the on the last, the last <laughs> thing before Santa, right? And he said, and look who's on the float, Elvis, and then Santa. And I went, they're elves. <laughs> <laughs> They're no, elves, a typo. They're el I thought this was an unusual parade. Why not now, honor the king Elvis. Did you guys have your back to the parade, or did you actually, were you actually seeing it? I was it was on the script, E-L-V-E-S. <laughs> okay, okay, but he didn't like see that it wasn't Elvis. No, but why would Elvis be with Santa? <laughs> it's a parade, why not? Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to be, I knew we had a diverse audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you thought Elvis was Santa. Okay, yeah. we got to tell this story because uh, the election night we were just talking about that <laughs> that was you talk about your heart stopping but we had I don't know which election it was yeah. and that's a that's a day that anchors uh, do not want to take place because mm. it's just stuff yeah, always goes wrong. It's your yeah. severe weather. So yeah. 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 It's, it's like a tornado outbreak. Yeah, but you get excited about a tornado up outbreak don't you? Um, no? Well usually those tornado outbreaks when I was working there were no tornadoes there's just tornado yeah. warnings, yeah. no tornadoes. Oh, I mean, yeah. Okay. Well, there was one, you know, yeah. a couple of years ago that actually had bona fide tornadoes. This is after I left. It's like, wow, look at that. But, you know, you've got to kill time, fill time until maybe something Yeah, happens. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so election. Well, it's yeah. not a tap You tell so. about it. You tell about it. No, well, no, I don't. You well, we had, <laughs> <Yeah>. so, we, <laughs> so we had... We, Seriously, we came this out is and, like and a family thing reunion. About elections, as you know, it's there, it's constant waiting on results and stuff like that, and it's always hectic. So we get out here. We didn't have scripts. I don't know why. The printer wasn't working. We didn't. No, have, we had scripts. We just didn't have anything written. Yeah, on there's them. nothing in oh, them. Yeah, there were no right. nothing right. happened. Yeah, no right. results. And in. then there was nothing in prompter because there was nothing on the scripts. And we open up the newscast, and it's live, uh, and, and it's. We didn't know what to say. It was just I read, I read the the races, and it said nothing, nothing to report, nothing to report, <laughs> nothing. To, and this is the whole A block. Yeah. And then I I started getting that that chill in my bones, and I said, Sherry, <laughs> I threw it to her, which you don't do, and she was so mad. I mean, you were a little upset. So. Well, that's the amazing well, thing with technology is that now you're gonna have something. You're gonna have those results. We're back. I remember taking. The ticker, t the ticker tape off the, or the ticker machine and just putting it on. We had a uh, two by four across the wall. Here's where sports goes. Here's where. And there was one night I missed something. I, th I don't think I got in trouble for it because I didn't see it. And it might have gotten in the trash. I don't know. But it wasn't good. I remember one sportscast you did. Everything was a disaster. The, the dugout we laughed, collapsed. We laughed through the entire. We, we did yeah. because I thought, what are you doing here? Yeah. And, it was and, like a newscast <laughs> for sports. Well, I the remember dugout collapsed. There, there was, was an injury to Moises Alou. His his ankle ended up pointing the right. Because we laughed through it. It's one. Of the, I have people you, ask me about it still, and it, and they said, "What was that one when you and Jim were just laughing? You couldn't get through it." And I went, "Oh yeah, that was. We did the X, Y, and Z, and it was everything. The dugout collapsed. There was an injury, and we just laughed like two little kids. Because it was it was just disaster after disaster. <laughs> so it was funny. I think that's what we did. I, I think that's probably the key. We laughed a lot. Yeah, we did. And most of it was. <laughs> <laughs> but it, well, it's almost a defense mechanism. Behind some of the bad the, yeah, news. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, that's yeah. life. You gotta yeah. laugh. So. Really. Yeah, I remember we were upgrading a uh, computer system, and the technology people who were here doing that goes, "Oh, we'll have this done by five o'clock. It'll be no problem." Five o'clock, it wasn't done. 
got to, I think we skipped the weather to 5 to 5.30. 5.30 still wasn't done. They ended up making me do a weather cast. And because of the way news can work sometimes, you get your normal time. It's like, I got no graphics. I'm going to have to talk oh my God. through a forecast without <laughs> any background, just me talking. It's like, can't you cut? No, you got, you got to fill the time. So that wow. was probably my, you know, yeah. other things went wrong, but just like not having a graphic system at all to, to use. Just mm -hmm. made it like well, if I may, no. my, may say, you were flawless. Oh, yeah. we, we talk about that all the time, Far how from, good I'm, you I'm, were. I'm also yeah. be good at hiding it. No, you, no, you were so good. Jeff, yeah. is, is there any such thing as a flawless weather forecast? You read your <laughs> scripts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was the secret, <laughs> not having a script. <laughs> That's what like I did. I'd like, come out with no script, that. and Jim would get mad at me because you don't have anything written down. I, that, yeah. I said, I, I said, I, I know the highlights. I'll, yeah. I'll get yeah. through it. And yeah, he just sit down, and they'd roll video, and off he went. So because he paid attention to what. Well, that's why I never read scripts. I thought, well, if he's not, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And somehow, through all of that, we managed to have some award-winning shows and award-winning broadcasts. And it, it wasn't, and that was the other thing, it wasn't just us. There's so many people behind the scenes, oh. camera people. Oh, my gosh. And everybody yeah, I, I was like, this was about the people. Yeah, we had say? a yeah, great team. it was all team. about the people. Well, and one thing, uh, Jeff, you touched on, which I think was very key, at least for the two of us, is we're from here. And we had, I, I mean, it was, it's such a thrill to know mom and dad were watching. And my, I went to high school at Magnolia and grew up in New Martinsville and, and shared the same way. And that just feel, felt really good, you know, that they could watch me and critique me. Yeah, critique <laughs> you. Yeah. You're perfect, Jim. You were perfect. Yeah, it, I think there was something about being local in the community. You felt a great responsibility. Right. A great responsibility. Right. I saw something that you did I was, as I was preparing to do not only this, but the other stories that we're doing for the 70th anniversary. You were talking about Red Donnelly, mm -hmm. and, or you were doing an interview about Red Donnelly, and uh, uh, the person you were talking to said that he always said you want to make, you want to be a part of the community. You pay taxes there. You become involved. And, I, and I'm listening to it, and I went, yeah, he's right. And it was, it was one of those things that it, as you were here, and it didn't take long. People just, it's the valley. People just kind of, well, I, I'm from Connecticut. That's where I grew up, but people welcomed you in. Yep. And if you let them know you and you were willing to get to know them, it, it became, you it know, your home place. It could be a beautiful place. thing, yeah. yeah. And even though I lived in, I grew up in the Ohio Valley in um, Martin's Ferry is where I was, grew up. I always say the, the um, suburbs. I lived in Etnaville. <laughs> I grew up in the suburbs. Some, <laughs> that's a suburb of Bridgeport, which is this, uh, this tiny. But, um, and then I moved up to Mingo Junction, and it was so surprising how the people of Mingo Junction welcomed me in. Um, and that was, you know, everyone was very territorial back then. Mm -hmm. we, I think that's one of the things I'm most proud of is what News 9 encompass the valley, brought the valley together, brought south to north and then West Virginia and Ohio mm -hmm. together and Pennsylvania. But I think that we looked at ourselves as a regional TV station, not the Steubenville station, yeah. you know. And I think that once we, we started saying, this is what we are, this is who we are, this is who we serve, um, all those people welcomed us into their community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know, you know, getting back to the TOV9 All-Star team, whenever you'd show basketball highlights, it's like, I played in that gym. I played in that gym. It's just like all these places, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I've been there. It's like we yeah. went, we planted that TOV9 flag yep. everywhere in this valley. Yep. And we, had, we had fun. It was, it was one of those things we went out and had fun. And I think the fun that we had together just carried over when we yeah. go and see yeah. people. Yeah. Right. Hey, can I get an autograph? Can you shake my hand? Yeah. Can you take a picture? And everybody just seemed to really enjoy that we were there and we enjoyed being there oh yeah and it just really worked and kevin had said that because it felt like that was one of the things you, you planted a flag but you were talking about mingo i remember doing mingo community days and we did a live broadcast i think we had the news desk on logan <laughs> avenue yeah and someone i remember i was with chris horn and someone just came up and started talking to us in the middle of us reading our scripts <laughs> there was all kinds of funny things like that that a lot. would happen definitely yeah. Well, if you get, do you guys go down the, the road, best memory or fondest memory that you have, or is there too many to even narrow it down to one? Hmm. I don't know. I've got, you know, almost 30 years of them. I, it's hard to, to pick just, just one, but it's just, just lots of them. Mm. I, I would, you know, I think 
one of the most memorable things, one of the things I'm most proud of is, okay, I mentioned like we, we set the tone for serving the Ohio Valley, but during the Shady Side floods, we dropped all competition and we joined with Channel 7 WTRF and Mark Davis and I anchored a special um, together. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm most proud of that because in, you know, everything's so competitive in this world and th there are just some things in life that are more important where you could, and we were able to drop that. Most fun, Jamboree in the Hills, hands down. Yeah, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Ditto, and two things for me, friends for life. Mm -hmm. That's priceless. And second, I loved how we covered uh, the military. And I, <clears throat> I was put in situations where somebody lost a, you know, a soldier and, you, you know, and they uh, invited us. It wasn't we showed up on their doorstep. But I loved the commitment we had to honoring our men and women in the uh, military. Yep. That, that's something I've never seen any other station do. Yep. And you? Um, you guys. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, I, I love doing sports. I love doing play-by-play. -play, but whether it's been someone asking me now or in the past, what do you love about TOV9? I always say the people. It's always, yeah. it's always the people. Yeah. Um, well, that's why we're here. Are you still <laughs> in touch with? I mean, like, I'm still in touch with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I worked with a lot of people. And um, I think we would be remiss because I think we're leaving out, you know, a huge, you know, colleague of ours in Eric Minor. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. You know, I'd love because he was, he's still the kid to me. Yeah, he <laughs> he's was our still intern. the kid yeah. to me, and he has kids that yeah. have graduated yeah. college yeah. and they're full fledged yeah. adults, and yeah. he's still the kid to me yeah. right. because he started with us as an intern. Yeah, I remember right. him leaning against the wall in the newsroom. Yeah. And I went over and I said, Eric, what are you doing? I said, waiting for someone to tell me something to do. And I said, all right, well, here, I'll give you something to do. <laughs> Go out with the, the photographer and the reporter. Yeah. And, you know, come back, put a package together. We'll look at it and go from there. And there were times he'd just sit in the newsroom and laugh at us because of our antics. <laughs> well, because we scream each other. You know what? You when scream. This was, remember um, Frank Costanza on, and he, he and this wife would just scream at each other? Uh -huh. That's what we would do behind the scenes. We'd scream. But it in was, a good way. It was <laughs> In a good way, yeah. <laughs> yes, I mean, we were just, I know, Sherry. <laughs> See, I, I missed most of that because you were out here. Yeah, I mean, they would interrupt my work to come in here and do these newscasts. Which is like, but I would occasionally, yeah. and I remember it more when you two and Kim. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. it's like something about her on a chair that you guys are. I don't know if you're turkey bowling with Kim in a chair. I mean, I just remember hearing this scream. I said, what is going on? <laughs> well, she's so dramatic anyhow. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, but, yeah, 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 it, it had to be pretty loud because, I mean, the newsroom used to be back then. Yeah. Right, right back there, right, 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 right back yeah. there. You still have a couple of lawsuits pending. <laughs> <laughs> I may have. I, yeah, and now and she's and the, you're a co-defendant. Now she's one of the main anchors oh, of KDK. It's amazing how yeah. many XTOV9 are in Pittsburgh. Yeah. That's what I missed about social media when I was on it is, people that pass through these doors mm -hmm. have done amazing things. Mm -hmm. They really have. A lot of people up in the Pittsburgh market, yeah. Columbus market, all over the country. And well, and, and our friend Michelle Estevans, the yeah, anchor out, out Seattle. in Seattle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Natalie Pasquarello's in New York. Right. Cindy Shoes in New York. Number I mean, one market in the country. Yeah. Yep. So there's a, there's a lot of people that have done a lot of, a lot of great things. So. Good to see you guys. Yeah. Jeff? Yes, I'm supposed to wrap this. I, I just want you guys to talk. I, was I'm, it noon? I'm still in time. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. There, oh, there you go, interrupting Kevin's day again. <laughs> <laughs> this just in. We have a live newscast. Well, I can't thank you guys enough for, for coming in, and, and it, it always feels a little bit weird every morning. I sit in your chair, and then I sometimes I'll sit in Sherry's chair for the for the midday. I'll sit in Sherry's chair, and just I still look at it as your chairs. Oh, we get oh. to take them when we leave, though. Yeah, that's, 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 it's quite we comfortable, need, actually. Yeah. So, so thank you but, for coming yeah, to us. We'll, 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 we'll do it in 70 years again.